Well, welcome everybody to the first edition of Data Drivers and our hackathon. I'm Corey Minton, an IT strategist at Splunk and founder of the Big Data Beard team. And I'm joined by somebody who has some job titles kind of similar to me. Yeah. Hey, Kyle Prince. I am also an IT strategist uh, and I am the CTO of Big Data Beard, uh, trying to help keep Corey uh, wrangled in and heading on the straight and narrow. But it's good to be here. It's a full-time job, if I'm honest. It is very Fine. terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but we are super excited to welcome you all to the Data Drivers Hackathon. Um, yesterday, we broadcast an awesome race at Barber Motorsports Park, where we had uh, a field of folks join us from Splunk, from some of our partners, as well as uh, some of you customers of Splunk's, and maybe some of you folks that are just interested in learning more about Splunk. And that was our data generation activity. But today we're getting hands on with Splunk, with Splunk in the first of a series where we're going to walk you through how to use Splunk's tools uh, to really extract some value, but not just in some old boring data set. We're using racing data and specifically really around this idea of sim racing and esports as a perfect analog to what happens in the real world with F1. Uh, we're going to be uh, we're going to be uh, walking you through some fun hands on activities. So. Uh, maybe you found yourself here, you found yourself to this Twitch channel, and uh, you're wondering, what exactly are we doing here? So if you'll advance the slide, yeah. So one more slide. By the way, we're here to have a good time. So if you see us like hand signaling or whatever, let's go back one right there. There we go. Okay. So the whole idea of this session is for us to do uh, two things with an expressed intention of helping you learn. So we wanted to do something fun uh, that was based on some of the things that we learned as the Big Data Beard in our virtual race to dot conf last year. If you missed it, you can go out to bigdatabeard.com, click on virtual race to dot conf. Basically, what we did is we went racing on iRacing. We uh, learned a bunch of stuff about getting data from iRacing into Splunk. And then we broadcast the races along with some really cool things that we had built in Splunk uh, to show you all what was possible. But the thing that we failed on was we didn't bring anybody into that process of learning Splunk with us. We just did it in our own like sheds and basements and offices that we learned a bunch. And you just, you got to see the output of it. Well, that's the, that's what this is intended to change. You're going to come racing with us if you want to on iRacing and have some fun because it's and by the way, it's for the sake of work because you're learning a technology that hopefully is useful to you in your job. But the hackathons, what this session today is all about and what you're going to see each month is we're going to use Splunk, specifically our IT ops tool set to extract value from iRacing and from this esports data to really build some valuable insights. But like any data project, it is absolutely or frankly technology endeavor. It is generally useless unless you have a good end user in mind who you're going to empower them with some competitive advantage powered by data. And I don't know if you all have seen, if you haven't, go check out Splunk's blogs, but Splunk is a partner, not only a sponsor of McLaren's F1 racing team, but this year we're excited to partner with Splunk's shadow uh, a racing team called McLaren Shadow Esports, which is an esports based team that actually races in a bunch of online series in a really neat way. And we're going to be getting their perspective on things that we can build with data. Now, some housekeeping items. If you want to join us and you want to get hands on, there's a QR code right over there uh, that you can use. Did I point the right direction? Nope, I went the wrong way. Point right over there. <laughs> there's a QR code that you can join. And basically what that does is it registers you uh, for, you can register for the races if you want to get on iRacing and come race with us, uh, or you can register for the hackathon. And when you register for the hackathon, that's going to invite you to actually get hands on with us and not just consume this on Twitch as a passive consumer. So go to the next slide, please. We do have an exciting schedule of events. Now the races, we actually kind of split it into two events. One is we race on the Tuesday of the week that we're going to do the activity. So like this week, we raced on the 30th. But then we actually broadcast the race here on Splunk's Twitch channel uh, and on the Big Data Beard channels, if you're joining us on any of those, uh, on the Thursday of that week, so that it gives Kyle and I time to do the commentary of actually building a race broadcast that's hopefully interesting to you. During those races, we'll actually be highlighting some of the things that we're going to build during these hackathons. So hopefully it's kind of a cool broadcast that you'll get to see some of the tech in uh, in use. 
uh, and we'll be doing more and more of that. So got some great races basically happen in about every month uh, at tracks around the world. So Barber Motorsports Park in my backyard in Alabama, but we're going to the UK next month. Then we're going to Spa and then all the way to Australia, then to Japan, and then back to California for our final race of the series. Now, Kyle, I got to ask you a question. Which track are you most excited about going forward? I think Brands Hatch, but also Phillip Island's good fun too. But Brands Hatch was actually the first track I ever raced on iRacing. So I, I got a little bit of a soft spot for it. But I think that was the point I realized that this is not just a game, but a true simulation platform <laughs> and truly understood the depth of just how bad I am at racing as well. Uh, so yeah, I'd say Brands Hatch. I'm, I'm pretty stoked for that. We'll That's have to be cool. practicing for the next month. You sell yourself short. If you all miss the race, Kyle probably would have ended his race yesterday or this last week in, I'm guessing, fourth place based on the way things shook out. But he uh, he forgot that Rubin is racing. And uh, uh, I'm, I may or may not have taken him out. <laughs> so Yeah, nobody... I, think, I think we could claim shenanigans on that. I might have to uh, <laughs> turn that into a GIF and send that out because that was... Mm, it's questionable. Yeah. All right, go to the next yes. slide. So <laughs> then with each of the races, we're going to have hackathons. Now, these hackathons are designed to basically guide you all through a similar journey that a Splunk customer would go through if they're beginning from sort of the early stage of using Splunk for an IT use case, all the way through to hopefully realizing the vision of really what is AI ops, which is how do we apply intelligent machine learning at scale to automate as much IT activities as possible so that we can focus on those really high value uh, act activities that are going to, you know, deliver some competitive advantage or in IT sake, you know, deliver a service that matters to the business rather than trying to keep the lights on. And so what you'll see is like today, we're going to work on getting data in from your gaming PC, which is the infrastructure that we use to power iRacing, which is much like what a customer would use, you know, if they're deploying Splunk for a, in a data center you're gonna start with monitoring infrastructure. You gotta make sure that all that stuff runs well and it's it's operating efficiently. Then we're gonna look at the next session will be about you know getting data in from a custom data source that maybe nobody's ever brought in before, which is our iRacing. So we're gonna get that the performance metrics from iRacing into Splunk. Then we're gonna start building with Splunk's IT service intelligence, really that the things that matter to not just you know uh, us as IT practitioners or SREs, but start to build those capabilities and data, uh, basically insights that might matter to, you know, so somebody in the line of business, somebody that's responsible for a service that matters to how the business is run. So we'll start building KPIs, we'll build service views, we'll build visualizations <clears throat> that like management would care about. And then we're going to talk about how we take all this and turn it into automated action and useful things at speed, like in race, how do you provide performance feedback. So join us for the hackathons. They're going to be progressive. If you miss one, you know, go back and do the one before because you're going to kind of need to build. But hopefully at the end of it, what you're going to have done is one had a bunch of fun talking about racing and esports and that kind of stuff. But you will have absolutely learn skills that are applicable in your day job if you're working in IT operations, site reliability, or frankly, if you're a business service owner and you're really saying, hey, how does IT help me make sure that I deliver this service well? These 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 sessions should give you a lot of insight on how you do that with Splunk. Okay, let's go to the next one. Now you can participate. As we said, you can get hands on with us. Just use that QR QR code. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just going the wrong direction. Use the QR code to to register. And if you if you're not familiar with how to use a QR code, just go to Google and type Splunk Data Drivers, and it's probably there. It's like the first event that shows up. Okay, so what you do if you sign up there. You'll get invited to our Discord channel. Discord is a collaboration platform similar to uh, um, Slack, but kind of more geared towards gamers, and it's pretty popular in the esports arena, so that's why we're using it. That's where we'll give you the information to get like hands-on, the access to our labs, that kind of stuff. We'll also, if you want to go racing with us on iRacing, that's where we will give you the session information to join the races uh, during the scheduled times so that you can actually get in a, a GT3 McLaren you know, virtually, of course, and come race against us. And I'll just tell you, like, if you didn't watch the race, we had a professional driver from McLaren's Shadow Esports team. He's one of their development drivers come race with us. And let me spoil the, the, the race for you. He dominated us, like absolutely dominated us. One of the fastest drivers at Splunk almost got lapped by him in a 20-minute race. Like, it was amazing uh, the, the performance he puts on. Okay, 
So if you don't want to do any of that hands-on and you just want to hang out with us on Twitch, we call that passive consumption. And by the way, we are glad to have you hang out with us on Twitch, enjoy the race broadcasts, watch the hackathons, maybe take some of the stuff that we're talking about and go tinker in your own lab. Feel free to comment in the chat. Uh, feel free to, you know, tell your friends, hey, maybe you should go check this thing out. We just ask that you be nice and don't be a troll. We're all here to learn something. And uh, so be nice and let's have some fun. All right, cool. Let's go to the next one. Now, the format for today and for the hackathons going forward is basically this. We're going to introduce to you today's session. Obviously, we had a big introduction of what we're doing here. We don't have to do that again next month. Don't worry about it. Uh, the next ones, we're basically going to start with introducing you to the challenge of the hackathon. Basically, this is the thing that we want you to go achieve technically as a part of the session. Before we get started showing you how to do that, we want to give you some perspectives from the McLaren Shadow Esports team. So Kyle and I had a chance to sit down with Tobin Lee, one of the managers of that esports team, to get some perspective from him on why uh, data matters, what, what, what's going on in the esports world, and we're going to get to that interview shortly. Then we're going to invite a Splunk subject matter expert besides Kyle or I to come join us to talk us through the technical tools within Splunk that we'll be using for that week's challenge. So in this case, we're going to have one of the, our fellow strategists. I won't spoil it yet. She's amazing. Um, she's going to come on and talk us through Splunk infrastructure monitoring as a tool, a tool set, why it matters, kind of what's important, how you might use it. And then we're going to get into what we call collaborative hacking. This is really a session where, you know, Kyle and I and our subject matter expert guest are going to get, we're going to show you the screens. We're going to walk through what we think the most efficient way to achieve the challenge objective is for you to follow along. Again, you're welcome to just watch it, but if you're one of our participants who's registered, we challenge you to actually go do the things we're doing and just use this as a reference. Hopefully each session we will do something you know cool and interesting, but we also wanna leave you with some things that maybe we won't do during the session, but that we think are really pretty interesting going forward that are things that we're gonna work on. Um, and so we'll have bonus challenges. And if you've registered and you participate in some of these bonus challenges, we have some really cool swag, like uh, like some pretty rad keychains, right? Some cool stuff that we can uh, we can mail your way. And then we'll give you a preview of the next session, what you should be looking forward to in the hack going forward. Kyle, did I miss anything in the introductions? I think you nailed it. Um, yeah, we're we're hanging out on Discord uh, all month long, so. You know, you can do the the hack at your own pace. So, you know, don't feel like you have to get it done immediately. We have it open. We have support channels available. Just reach out to us via Discord, get signed up, and uh, we're here to help and hope you have a good time with it too. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, candidly, I want to restate this because I think this is critical to keep in mind. The entire purpose of this effort is for you all to have a chance to create a fun and interesting data set that gives you a chance to play with and get hands on with Splunk's IT tools that are absolutely industry leading, but get hands on with them in a safe, fun, easy way. That's hopefully a way where you're getting access to some of Splunk's best and brightest subject matter experts, uh, Kyle and I not included, um, <laughs> that you're getting access to some folks that can help you learn, uh, can help you develop skills that hopefully are transferable in your, in your day job. And if they're not, Hopefully you're having fun coming racing with us and learning how to actually build the tools that are going to be interesting. Cause, cause I'll just say this, like one of the things that we're doing is we're at the end of this, we will have built uh, insights for the Splunk uh, or for the shadow sports team for McLaren that will absolutely be used by a real esports team. That'll absolutely be, you know, part of the things that we show as part of our partnership between Splunk and McLaren, and we're doing that with their guidance along the way. So we're really inviting you into what I think is a super fun project to basically bring data and the data to everything platform to esports sim racing. So with that, let's jump to the next slide, Kyle, if you will. And we're going to go check in, as I said, oh, sorry, challenge introduction. We're not going to talk to Shadow real fast. Let's talk about the challenge. The yeah. challenge is today monitoring your PC, your gaming PC infrastructure. So let me, let me give you a little background. iRacing is the racing uh, sim. Think of it as the game that we're playing on our gaming PCs. To run iRacing, you need a pretty powerful uh, PC, Windows PC or Windows or Mac PC booted into Windows because iRacing only runs on Windows OS. 
But in order for the game to run well, meaning to have a good experience for the driver so that you get proper frame rates, right? You get connectivity. You need to have a PC that's operating well. It is critical. We have actually seen a number of times where professional drivers were racing during COVID in esports events where gaming PC performance took them out of the race. And if we think that if our customer in this, right, as we, have, as we build this is our racers and our team managers of racing teams, the, if, if infrastructure impedes their ability to win, it's literally taking money out of their pocket. Like that is a business impacting problem that we hopefully can help avoid. We can help them identify when there's gonna be a problem in the infrastructure so we don't have those money affecting service impacting issues that can happen. It's absolutely true that gaming PC performance has taken money out of the pockets of professional race drivers. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually monitor well, one more. There you go. We're going to monitor. Oh, <laughs> Slides are tough. Uh, we're going to give you it. the chance to get a Splunk infrastructure monitoring smart agent running on your PC, sending those performance metrics into our sim environment lab that we're providing you access to. And you're actually going to be able to start to visualize the performance metrics and start to create some actionable intelligence. We're doing that today. You're going to need from us the lab credentials, which we emailed to all of our registrants about two hours ago or so. Um, and if anybody doesn't have those credentials, you're welcome to hit us up on the Discord channel or reply to that email is just fine. You're also going to need an access token, which will allow you to send data to our ingest API. You'll need region information about where the, you know, where our cloud hosting facility is so that the agent can work properly. And you'll actually need to deploy the smart agent for Windows on the machine. We're going to walk you through all of that hands on today. And if you haven't, if you're a participant, take some time right now while this next video plays about our perspectives, go make sure you collect that information because right after this video, we're going to start talking about Splunk infrastructure monitoring, then we're going to get hands on on deploying this thing. All right, Kyle, let's go to the next one. Now, as we said, all tech projects, big data, AI, machine learning, whatever buzzword you want to talk about as it relates to data and analytics, it is all useless and is a waste of time if you do not have an end user in mind who has a use case that you can help them solve a problem that either helps them make money, save money, win more, avoid losses, right? Serve the objectives of a business end user. And our business end user in this endeavor, because us just deploying Splunk, you know, monitoring for a, a game is, is dumb if it doesn't actually help somebody. Like it does, if it doesn't meet a need. And so we meet a need. We're going to be talking with the shadow McLaren esports team about how data can deliver competitive advantage. You're going to hear from Tobin Lee. He's a professional driver turned team manager for McLaren Shadow Esports. Let's go check in with Tobin. Tell us a little bit about your background and how you came to manage the McLaren Shadow Esports team. Yeah, so I am Tobin, obviously, as you know, but my background is is that, so I'm 20 now, but since I was 16, so for the far, past four years, I myself have been competing um, professionally in esports, in sim racing, and in a range of different titles, and it was fully my job. It's how I got through as a kid. It's how I paid off my education, ironically, so I actually managed to pay off um, using money from sim racing, I got through my education, went to uni, and now ultimately I am in management with McLaren, uh, covering the McLaren Shadow esports team, which is absolutely mental. Um, it's really cool, but it's really exciting to be in a position where I can take my experience from you know everything that I was doing as a, as a kid, but now actually influencing this industry and pointing it in the direction that... Um, you know, in, a, in an informed direction. So yeah, that's, that's a little bit about me. Well, very cool, Tobin. That's, that's great to turn passion into, into a pursuit for a career. Uh, I love that. It, hopefully you'll never work a day in your life if you're having fun. But I'm curious, what, what exactly is this McLaren Shadow Esports team? Like what, what exactly, like why does it exist and maybe where do you all compete? Yeah, so McLaren Shadow represents uh, McLaren's 
diversification and kind of uh, it, it's it it really embodies their um, their efforts to get involved with esports fundamentally. That is that is effectively what it is. Obviously, esports. If you haven't heard of it or if you're not too familiar with it, it is uh, you know it's booming at the moment and it's growing and it's also representing like for a, for a firm like McLaren. Esports is starting to represent a possible alternate way to get into motorsport in in the in the real world, if you like. So I think I mean obviously there's a bunch of reasons as to how the McLaren Shadow Esports team came about, but I think um, yeah, it's 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 just an exciting new kind of concept, and McLaren are right on it, and and I think it's so impressive that they see that. So uh, the background is, is that fundamentally McLaren Shadow um, has competed mainly in the official Formula One esports series. Uh, so they've been in that um, for a number of years now. Uh, but this year they're starting to do diversify and get involved into a range of different titles like, uh, um, you know, like Assetto Corsa, um, uh, Assetto Corsa Competizione, as well as... Um, titles like Trackmania, which are a bit more arcadey, as well as plenty more uh, to come, including iRacing as well. Actually, with um, currently McLaren Shadow are in the iRacing eNASCAR series as well. So honestly, they're, they're branching out so much this year. It's quite cool to see. And uh, yeah, so they're, they're all over. So it's, it's wild how explosive esports has gotten. But it's more than just kids playing video games. Can you tell us a bit more around the scope of esports? So like total viewership, market cap, uh, all those kinds of metrics? Yeah, I mean, it's it's big business. Like it, it I think yeah. that's the you know, that's the short summary really of, of everything. I think um uh, it I think Esports as a whole is obviously absolutely massive. You have a range of um, different games like sort of League of Legends, Dota and CSGO and those kind of titles are more mainstream and, you know, they're the big hitters in the, in the industry at the moment. But we're getting to see more and more um, kind of avenues of esports like sim racing, which is a big one that's growing very quick, um, that's all getting up there. So I think... Uh, Basically, the, the, the quick way to summarize it is that the, the main, more established part of esports with the Dotas and the CSGOs, there's a huge amount of money involved in that. And players are on massive, massive salaries, as you can probably imagine. And the, the viewership that, they, that these tournaments pull are, are ridiculous, like often beating, uh, you know, TV segments or being on TV themselves. Um, but I think that... Um, like with sim racing specifically, which is kind of where I think when we think of McLaren Shadow, we think of racing. Uh, this kind of area is, I mean, five years ago, it was, it was very small, but now it's already getting up there. So I think what we're seeing is just, you know, it's, uh, yeah, the, the metrics are on the, on the rise very quickly in sim racing, but they're massive elsewhere in, in esports. So, yeah. It's yeah. it is it is phenomenal to watch the uh, the growth has been incredible the as, as you said the influence like that these esports uh, personalities are having in the market is stunning um, but I, I think you know as you all said McLaren is leading the way and getting out in front of this and using it and one of the things that you hit on in your comment earlier was that McLaren is using esports as a um, as a as a path for like young people to get into motorsports. Is it true that McLaren is like actually viewing this as uh, as esports as like a, like a fertile kind of hunting ground or recruiting ground for the next generation of like track track racers? Like, does do, do the skills that we develop in sim racing in our houses and in our garages and basements and sheds and everywhere else do those transfer to like real on track capabilities? Well, I think um, in McLaren Shadow, we've got a really good example that can uh, display your question in, in practice, actually, because we have, um, so James Baldwin is part of the roster. So James, um, if you haven't heard of him, he won a competition in 2019 called the World's Fastest Gamer Competition. And the prize uh, for winning that is a race seat in the British GT um, uh, real world motorsport category and he would be driving for the year a McLaren 720S GT3 for Jensen Button's um, race team okay and wow. James uh, took part in 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 that and 
off of limited uh, real world um you know driving experience in in a race scenario he went and won his first race uh in the series he beat the entire field and won it straight off the bat so i think james and 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 the more you kind of read into his story um who you know you know he is competing with us he's one of the drivers that we that we run with at mclaren shadow um i think that he puts it into practice and can show that there are skills that can be transferred and you can learn how to drive on a sim and you can apply it very clearly he, he showed us all that um and so yeah i, I think it's you can definitely transfer the skills from the sim to the track um and i think that i think that mclaren as a company uh, and as an organization i'm sure that maybe there you know there aren't officially ways to get into motorsport through sim racing at this stage um but i know that everyone involved and anyone who's you know looking at esports i think that when you're forecasting for the future it's, it's quite clear that this might be a very valid way to get into the real race team so i think it's another reason why yeah i think it's just spot on that mclaren are involved as they are so yeah, it seems like it's just growing more and more and getting trickier to manage. I mean, you, you've got a lot on your plate. What sort of metrics and data points are you looking at when you're managing an esports team? Yeah, so this is a this is quite an open kind of question actually, because there's a lot. Like as you guys, I know you guys know very much so that you know data can be applied into so many different areas and so i think you know if i think about it off the bat right so data fundamentally when we talk about esports probably the first thing that a lot of people will think about is performance and i think data can help significantly with performance on the day you know so if you're setting laps and we get data back um you know with lap race traces and you know what the inputs are and what the car's doing on these sims and everything like that obviously from a you know there and then perspective data can be invaluable to just helping us as management and the drivers themselves kind of spot where they need to work on in the moment so i think that that's absolutely spot on i think that from a management's perspective uh, management specific uh, perspective uh, data can just be very useful to spot trends in how people are working um, I because from my perspective, um, when I'm working with drivers and helping them to get prepared for race days and stuff, um, there's a lot of little indicators that I'll look at as in how are people spending their time? Are they doing sessions? Are they doing hot lap sessions? Are they doing long race runs? And just mapping how people are using their time to prepare may allow a manager and it does allow management to to give feedback and to help point people in the right direction. So if someone's preparing particularly well, then it's easy for us to then assist, you know, and point others in the right direction. So yeah, again, the, the list goes on, but off the, off the top of my head, uh, I mean, there's some very clear advantages to getting data on board and to utilizing it to help in all aspects of, of what it's like to be involved in, in this esports game if you like <laughs> there you go well I, I mean i'm excited because Tobin, uh, we asked you kind of a broad question what role does it play right and it's and, it, and as you said it applies in a bunch of different ways but you're going to be our our subject matter expert if you will or for our for our attendees and participants in this hackathon what you're going to be doing is helping shape the way that we think about the things that we go build uh in splunk using the data that we extract from uh the infrastructure that empowers our games and the uh, the game itself to look at you know the performance of the driver and the car in the race and ultimately trying to win right and so I'm excited to have you come join us because I'm hoping that we can kind of drill into each of those along the way but like if you think about just as a big picture you know you've got a bunch of folks here who are uh, who are going to be working with the data and starting to think about how they would build things using Splunk technology that would be interesting and useful to you as a team manager of an esports racing team, as well as, uh, you know, dashboards and capabilities that would be interesting to a driver. So like, if you, if you think about that as a context, maybe what's just some high level advice that you might, you know, give us as, as participants in this hackathon, as we're going out and building data tools 
you know, what might be useful for us to think about from your perspective? Yeah, I think um, the top advice I'd probably give at this stage, obviously we're very early on in the in the path of progress, but I think ultimately the way to succeed with this is to think about this like it's a real motorsport uh you know venture that we're getting uh, getting on board so if we contextualize it you know if you're not familiar with sim racing and esports if you just think what would the f1 team at mclaren need and then the chances are is if you shoot for that chances are you'll hit it 90 percent of what we need on the esports side as well and then we do a little bit of tinkering at the end you know so yeah it, it's it there's I think that that's probably the way to get into the right mindset for this. Um, and yeah, I, I, to be honest, I, it's, it's quite cool for us on our side of things, uh, of esports as well, because I think that there's been limited work in this area. Like there hasn't been much work into data in, in what we're looking to do. So I think that whereas I might want to give you guys advice and I can, I think there's also, we'll learn from each other in this as well. And I think that that's kind of the beauty of it. So yeah. <laughs> well, Tobin, thank you so much for representing McLaren's Shadow Esports team with us and providing, you know, guidance to the participants because we are excited to get our hands on the data and go driving. And we're super excited to have uh, Tomic and hopefully some more folks from the McLaren team join us in the races because let me tell you, he put on a clinic this week on uh, on how to drive at Barber Motorsports Park. So let's get back into uh, getting our hands on the data and data drivers. All right. Well, that was uh, it was super cool to get some perspective. Hopefully, you all you all were as excited to see that as we were to uh, to conduct that interview. Obviously, Kyle and I enjoyed chatting with him. But Tobin, uh, big thanks to Tobin and the McLaren Shadow Esports team for committing time to partner with us on this. Uh, and I, I just one big thanks to that team. It's an incredible partnership. Uh, and if you all are not tuned in to the F1 races where McLaren is competing excellently already this year. Um, tune in. And also, I'm going to be watching more of the uh, Shadow team compete in some of this E-NASCAR stuff going forward. So make sure you check that out. Now, it's time to invite our subject matter expert for <clears throat> today's hackathon. She is the one and she is the only, Jenna Eagle. The We love know her as the enforcer of the boss of ops and observability program here at Splunk, a fellow member of the IT strategist team, Jenna Eagle, like the bird, welcome <laughs> to Data Drivers. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is gonna be great. It is. Well, Jenna's no, she's not just, uh, you know, some newbie around here. She's been working with Splunk for, uh, for a good bit of time and has some really cool skills. One to call out, she was actually featured recently as Ray Skywalker. Uh, in a uh, in an internal video where she absolutely crushed it, uh, which is fantastic. But Jenna, why don't you tell us a little bit about some of the things you've done for uh, for Splunk over the last couple of years? Sure. So I uh, started as an account solutions engineer for uh, this you know organization called NASA and JPL. Um, we got to do some really cool stuff and work with extremely smart customers, um, especially with monitoring some of the systems. Um, for the Perseverance rover. So Splunk helped with the Mars mission, which is really, really cool. Um, cool. Right? <laughs> and then of course, Boss of Ops and Observability, the enforcer for that, they call me. Um, and then when when I'm not uh, Splunking, I do love hiking, my dog Fig, um, and then also, I guess, dressing up as, as Ray Skywalker. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Well, you're a fellow. I know you're a fellow ski bum. You, uh, I think you probably logged more more days on the mountain this year than me. Yeah, yeah. I had I we had a good time. I was in my favorite spot this year uh, was my trip to Jackson Hole. That's cool. Which was great. Yes. I'm looking forward to trying that next year. Well, Jenna, and you have the uh, the 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 weird pleasure of being between two beards <laughs> on the broadcast. Right. Uh, it's kind of like between it. two ferns, yeah. but a little bit, uh, probably yeah. more oil involved. Yeah, uh, <laughs> two beards. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jenna, why don't you do us a favor? You're our, you're our pro, our subject matter mm -hmm. expert for Splunk Infrastructure Monitoring. I know you've Love deployed SIM yeah. for a bunch of customers. I know you mm -hmm. actually are one of the, the great minds behind some of our new workshops 
that are yep. based on uh, infrastructure monitoring. So we're going to turn it over to you and let you spend a few minutes just explaining to folks, you know, really what is Splunk infrastructure monitoring in terms of context, some of the things to keep in mind about it as we then go start deploying the thing. Cool. Perfect. Yes, that is great. And and I mean, first off, thank you so much for having me on today. I mean, like, seriously, how cool is this? We're racing, we're hacking. Um, and like you said in the beginning, this isn't a, a boring data set. So I don't know if it gets much cooler than, than this. <laughs> so, um, and I know that we want to get our hands on, we're going to have a great time, um, start hacking away and getting set up for the rest of the hackathon series. But um, like you said, Corey, I figured it's it's good to know what the heck we are going to use for this and, mm -hmm. and the why. Yeah. So, I mean, we are talking about performance here, right? So uh, you need a gaming PC and you need it to run well. Unless you want to blame, you know, getting last place on your PC and, and not <laughs> your racing skills. So <laughs> that's why I bumped you, Kyle. I had a performance problem. That's why. Yeah. How convenient. <laughs> <laughs> so, so like, what what do we want to monitor when we're talking about performance? Of course, we want metrics. Um, and with Splunk infrastructure monitoring, we're going to get that real time metrics based monitoring. Um, we also need to see like what's happening performance wise as a at a uh, extremely granular level. And Splunk infrastructure monitoring really, really kicks butt with this sub-second visibility. And then now we know that there's like so much that you can monitor and it can set up all sorts of, of custom metrics, but uh, SIM does come with hundreds of out of the box integrations, which I believe you guys will be using, mm -hmm. um, including uh, pre-built dashboards. So um, I think, uh, yeah, in, in the very short time frame we have today, Kyle, I think we are actually going to see a good bit of, of what I just walked through there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and one of the things I was going to highlight, too, is that, like, one of the things that we hear a ton of talk about is that this mm -hmm. that multi-cloud thing you talk about. Yeah. That is a big deal. And and for us in the, in the racing part of it, it's true, too. Like, we're going to be talking not just about data in mm -hmm. our, you know, infrastructure that's in our, you know, offices where we're working, but we're going to be pulling right. data from an API that's software in the cloud that's yep. running on some Splunk instances in the cloud. So we've got a real sort of multi-instance thing going on, but we're going to have a unified monitoring performance system here with Splunk Infrastructure Monitoring that's going yeah. to give us a lot of power. So I'm excited and this, about that. Yeah, and, and the screenshot that I put here, it's it's from our uh, a, a different lab environment than what you guys are going to have, but it does show here. We have AWS, Azure, GCP all in one place. You don't have to sit there and like swivel chair between all of the different cloud platforms that you have. And then we also have our on-prem stuff here. So hy hybrid monitoring as well. Yeah, that's, that's super yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, and then if, if we go to the next slide, you know, we we want what can we monitor and then how do we get that data into our infrastructure monitoring solution? So um, the integrations in SIM, we're talking full stack here. There are hundreds of integrations currently and the way you can get data in falls in line with that integration. And so for our purposes, we're looking at Windows post data, right? So we're doing gaming PCs. So we're going to use the smart agent for Windows. And this is super easy to install. Kyle, I think you're you're walking everyone through this, right? That's yeah. And and he's done he's done it before. So don't don't <laughs> worry. <laughs> I I was amazed at how easy it was to install. You know, you, you do right. think like, oh no, an agent, now it's gonna be a, a problem. But we'll go through it. It's it's super easy. Yeah. Um yeah, it's 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 absolutely astounding how, that, how simple it is and then how out of the box it is. Right. And so and, and I mean, it's easy. It um, is extremely lightweight um, hmm. and it's yeah, it's it's super easy to install. Um, it's lightweight, open source based agent for Linux and Windows. Um, and it does have auto discovery of services and configuration of metrics. So for it, in our case, Windows environments or our like gaming PCs. Um, so not only does it 
you know, ex expedite time to value with all of that auto discovery. Um, but it's going to provide us with that super granular visibility. And I'm going to show a couple screenshots next that will hope like hopefully help me tell that message or, or I guess brag about how powerful and cool this this little lightweight smart agent is. So if you go to the next slide, this is an example of percentage CPU utilization in Splunk infrastructure monitoring. So you'll get to see some of this in, in your environments, but when you're there, um, and we can always come back to this later, but um, we can change the chart resolution and then zoom in on this timeline. And you can see that data collection is occurring once every 10 seconds. Wow. Okay, and th this is, like I said, this is a different lab environment, but. This is using the smart agent for Windows, which you all will configure with, with Kyle. And then this next slide shows CPU utilization through CloudWatch collection. So public cloud monitoring tools work at like lowest one minute resolution with the default being a lot higher. Um, but a lot of folks are, are going to require this, this real time surfacing of critical metrics. And this is what we want for our gaming PCs as well. Um, so I'm, I'm glad that we decided to use the smart agent because we're going to actually see how powerful and, and how cool this thing is. Um, because now that we have the smart agent, now that we're getting these uh, real time sub second visibility into the metrics, we can get truly real time alerts as well. So if we're working with anything higher than seconds, we're going to miss seeing the, the critical degradations and not be alerted on it in, in real time. Yeah. And I'll tell you, you know. what, the, the granularity is going to matter a bunch whenever we get into the, the racing data. The infrastructure certainly is going to matter, but I think right. the the race the racing performance metrics are going to be really important to have that granularity yeah. because a lot happens in a second at 250 kilometers per hour right like, right you can right. have a lot of stuff happen so that's yeah cool. so, so this will this will be like really really cool to see because um you know i i always use the uh you, you don't want to fly blindly but i guess now you don't want to drive blindly <laughs> yeah, or race sure. <laughs> blindly Actually, go so. to the next slide this is per perfect segue oh yeah there we go <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yep. So, so you know, if, if you are using tools provided to you, say like in AWS, and you're using that that point monitoring in AWS CloudWatch and not sending it to Splunk infrastructure monitoring, you are going to likely be racing blind. So, um, this is this is really cool because we're offering um, granularity. So, so ten seconds by default, which is what we saw in that screenshot, and then one second at best which is compared to like five minutes or one minute versus other tools. So it's we'll very to, cool. Uh, maybe we could set that as a challenge and if yeah. somebody wants to change your granularity to one yep. second. Yep, can, yep. 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 exactly. So every, go. yeah, that's, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> so now I guess uh, for this slide here, you know, how, how the heck are we gonna get started? Mm. And it, there's a lot that we can do. Um, there's a lot of custom metrics. There's all of that, that that you can do, but the best way to get started is with this, uh, all of the out of box metrics based dashboards and detectors in Splunk infrastructure monitoring. And I also have a couple of screenshots on the next page to just show you how to navigate that in your environment. Um, I'm not sure, are, are people logged in? Yet maybe yep, or we've got some okay. Folks so in. if if folks are are logged in and following along, you know you can just click on that integrations tab at the very top and just scroll through that and peruse all all of what you have available to you. And then on the next slide, um, I'm using this as an example, but but you can really click any of them that that you find interesting. So you're gonna get an overview. And if you like touch on the different tabs there, the setup is going to show you what stanza that you need to in your monitor stanza for the smart agent. So you'll get uh, information about how to add this. And then uh, metrics is going to show you all of the metrics, out of the box metrics that come for this integration. And there are going to be a lot. Um, and then you have this built-in content and it'll give you a little preview of what the built-in dashboards will be. So you so, can kind of preview all of this stuff prior. So my understanding then is we've got like a configuration YAML file sitting there. Mm -hmm. 
Yep. Splunk infrastructure monitoring then shows us how to how to configure that then with simple YAML, what yep. metrics we get out of the box for yep. that, and then pre-populates dashboards ready to go for exactly. us. Exactly. That we can then edit, move around, build integrations, alerts, yep. off, do whatever. Is that right? Exactly. And and all of this is in the docs as well, but we have this like within the UI so that while you're there, just go through and, and check out what we have. And, and yeah, it provides all of that, gives you step by step. And once you have the smart agent in and done, it's really just it gives you the additional information to add to that monitor. And one Very thing I was cool. going to call out, we've got a, a handful of folks signed up to join us. I won't call their names out or identify exactly, but there are some data science <laughs> folks that are data scientists that are part of our team. Hey, Fig. Hi. <laughs> She's, we're always welcome to have Fig join us. Uh, there's some data science folks who are uh, who are signed up to join us. And yeah. one of the things I know, because we spend a lot of time in the data science community, is the number of integrations that exist to help monitor these modern, you know, big data environments, whether, you know, it's Hadoop running a little bit dated, but some of the more modern uh, sort of tables in memory DBs, right, that, that, that are really interesting in the data science context, I think it's pretty yeah. darn cool. Yeah. And one that I'd challenge those participants to definitely go uh, go tinker with in your own environment, because those are, you know, those are environments that, you know, as we start to build more business impact and capabilities based on the, the machine learning right. pipelines, critical to make sure that those services are performing. And this will be the, this is a great also pivot to my uh, next part, which the data science folks are gonna love this. Um, you know, so, so the first time that you're actually made aware of a degradation or an outage, preferably a degradation prior to that outage is, is through an alert. Um, and, and this alert needs to be actionable and needs to quickly orient the engineer as to like what the heck is happening. So you are, are taking these cues as, as to what to do next. Um, and then also, and this is the great part is what about that intelligent alerting? So like, duh, we definitely want that. We want these alerts built from intelligence based on history or peer groups um, and, and looking for stuff that's out of the norm as well. And all of this is super interactive within the UI and you can do all of your tuning straight from the UI, which is really cool. All right. So, so I just I got a note, but I'm just gonna bring this up. We're gonna bring this yep. challenge up. I just got a note that we had a chance, we have a problem with the user token. Um, okay. I'm going to change the flag. We have it set as a ingest token. Uh, oh yeah. Let's change that authorization scope to uh, can we API change? and ingest. There you go. All right, Perfect. We'll work on Perfect. Cool. Okay. Awesome. All right. Well, good luck, guys. I'm here. You're not leaving, TV Punk. TV. You're staying here with us. Okay. You got it. You got to help walk us through this thing. <laughs> got it. You got can't it. get out of here. All right, <laughs> folks. This is when we're getting hands on. Kyle's going to stop sharing his screen shortly. But as a reminder, what we're doing, Splunk infrastructure monitoring, getting data from your gaming PC. Let's go do it. You should have access to the uh, lab credentials, access token, region info. We're going to walk you through it. Kyle, go for it. I will. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to send a new token out to our team here in just a moment. Awesome, perfect. And again, if if you're needing assistance, Discord, uh, it's going on right now. If you join uh, via the email that we sent you during registration, uh, if you haven't registered, feel free to do so. Uh, it does take about a day for us to get the email back for you. Uh, so it's not an immediate registration. So if you're kind of on the fence, go ahead and sign up because we'll go ahead and send out the registration uh, in about 24 hours. So time to hack. Let's do this. Get hacking, bro. Let's do Get this. Get hacking. Cool. <laughs> so, <It's> a banana. <laughs> I love it. I love it. The that banana. So uh, that is that is just perfect for any desk. You've got to keep the proper amount of potassium. So uh, <laughs> here we are at the app.us1signalfx.com. Uh, you should have a username and password created then from the email that we sent a couple hours ago. Uh, mine is already signed up. So we're going to go ahead and push sign in. Uh, this is part of the pre-populated dashboards that Jenna uh, was going over uh, earlier. And as you can see, this is just infrastructure as a whole. Uh, but we're getting everything from IOPS to disk space to even a few machines popped in here right now. So shout out to Big Dog One 
who's playing along with us. Always good to have you, Nate, as well as Corey. And we can see that Corey's machine is actually doing a bit of work. So thank yeah. you, Corey, so, for actually uh, what's going on there. Yeah, so just as a heads up, so you know kind of what's causing my machine to perform. You can see I've got a 2070 Super GPU, so I'm not playing on some garbage machine. By the way, <laughs> if any of you all can find just a discreet 30 series GPU, if you figured out a secret for those, please tell Kyle and I. Like, I'd love yeah. to have a proper... 30, 70, 30, 80, 10 plus gigs of VRAM, like, and I'm willing to pay for it. I just can't find the thing and I don't need a whole new PC. So anyways, what's happening right now is I've got Zoom running. I've got a 4K camcorder running through a, a capture card um, with Zoom, Zoom, and, uh, Zoom going. And then I'm also running our streamer. So I'm using um, XSplit Broadcaster, which is actually in real time encoding all these video streams that you all are enjoying on screen as well as this motion background and all the things like all that has happening at the CPU and GPU level. And so it's, I got some stuff going on. Like it's not a broke Weird. machine. Like Kyle's computer is not that much cooler Very than mine. Cool. <laughs> you were just, staying busy. I'm busy. I'm kind of a big deal. <laughs> I love it. Well, I, uh, I'm i very impressed with it. And yes, please, if you can find 3000 series graphics cards, we let us know how to find those because we are not too bright at it. We didn't. Yeah, uh, there was a Best Buy drop today and we missed it. Yeah. Yeah. We were working and we were too busy to find it. So, yes. <laughs> so one thing that uh, I wanted to call out here that Jenna pointed out earlier was the granularity that you can get we can actually just drop this down to one minute and you can see these 10 second updates start to pop through now uh one challenge that we have is to go ahead and see if you can drop that down to a second log back in and see if you can get that to pop up uh, and then another thing that i've been playing with a bit is the chart resolution here where you can get it to very high and get a little bit more of a granular look at that Jenna, am I doing anything wrong so far? Do nope, I, do that we was the... that was perfect. I was gonna say, make sure that we check on the chart resolution, but you were already on top of it. I'm learning well. I'm learning there well. There you go. <laughs> good teachers, good experts here. Awesome. <laughs> now, another thing that I wanted to call out too is that we also have the infrastructure windows specific screen as well. So not only are we jo not just looking at infrastructure as a whole, because we know infrastructure can just vary. You know, a network switch isn't a storage array, isn't a Windows box, isn't a Linux box. But now we can actually dive into a host that we can see what's going on and specific to that. So let's see what's going on with Corey's machine right now in real time with just a tiny bit of delay right there. We, Corey, you are you're yeah, doing I'm, pretty good on the CPU front. So Did just to give you a, a clarification of how accurate it is, on XSplit yeah. Broadcaster, I can actually see real time. It gives me at the bottom to like keep an eye on like real time performance metrics of the streamer and the encoder. And yeah. it is matched almost exactly like it literally is just exactly right behind it. Maybe a <laughs> second of of difference, but it's it's legit. And the percent memory used is spot on, uh, you know, mm -hmm. 32 gigs of RAM. And it's uh, it's using a good bit of it. You're doing pretty well. Now, my machine used to be in here, but we're going to re-add it and we'll see how I'm going with my uh, sharing right now. Oh, that's right. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is go ahead and create a token because the API token is going to be the, the translation layer for us. Now, if you are following along, we created a token, generated the token and sent that out to you. I'm going to be creating one specifically for myself. And then as soon as this stream ends, we are going to be deleting that token. So please do not be copying the token that you're about to see on the screen. It's just like passwords. We don't share them. <laughs> <laughs> so just as an FYI for any of our participants, if you got an error uh, when trying to use the original ingest token that we sent out, I apologize. We mischecked a box. It should have been an API token for its scope. Um, there has been an update to the uh, to the Discord channel uh, and a new token sent out. So if anybody gets an error, uh, ping us on Discord and I'll happily provide you the appropriate new key uh, to make sure everything sp spins properly. Yeah, and, and one thing I wanted to call out too, and as you're playing along, if you're dark mode preference like I am, you can actually drop right up here and change that to the dark theme which I'm a huge fan of. That's what all the cool kids are doing that. these days. Yeah. Right? Just, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You have to, you know? Are you really even working on a computer if it's not in dark mode? It's, it's just not a thing. It's not real. So <laughs> we have the organization. You're part of the Big Data Beard organization that exists here in uh, Splunk Infrastructure Monitoring. And we're going to go ahead and hit Organization Settings. 
drop down to access tokens. And as you can see, we've got a few tokens here that we've been playing with in the background, kind of goofing off with. Now, let's create a new token. We'll call this the data drivers demo token. And then and there then you're just gonna, gonna select both of the boxes. Yes, and we'll, we'll grab both of those boxes and push okay. Lesson learned. That's right, we're, you know. <laughs> hey. Well, candidly, that, that ability, just so we're on the same page, the ability to have an ingest only token was actually only launched as of March 25th in the recent release. And so, candidly, I had next to go through the full, full release notes and we hadn't tested it to see if it would work properly with what we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. And we learned. And you know what? Sometimes you learn by doing that's why we're here. Hey, we are doing well <laughs> in the demo world, right? That's right. If it, it's, <laughs> not a, it's not a real demo if it doesn't sort of break. <laughs> yeah. So, here we go. So, uh, as you can see, you can pull some metrics around the token itself. We are going to show that token, copy it, and then I'm going to just drop that into a Notepad++. We'll grab a second note here. Sorry, was, that a, uh, was that a plug for Notepad++? I, you know, it is open source software. And when I was an infrastructure admin, uh, I loved this, specifically around column editing, because then you can just type out a command and send it in. Anyways, side note. If, you, if you're looking for a good, powerful notepad editor, yes, shameless plug. So yeah. we've got the token. We've got our realm, which is going to be US1. And now we need to know how to get this done. So quick install guide. Uh, you can literally Google uh, quick install Splunk infrastructure monitoring. It will pop up. Here's a URL. Also, we sent it out in the email. It's in the Discord channel as well. But this is how we're going to do it. So you've got a few different ways you can do this, I understand. Like if we're doing Linux, you can tar -GZ it. If we're doing Windows, you can install it from a zip file. Uh, Jenna, I'm I'm going to do the PowerShell installation. Do you mm -hmm. have, is that cool? Yeah, okay. that's, that is, that's great. <laughs> okay, perfect. We're going to go right here, literally copy and paste that yep. command. This is the, this is the quickest, easiest way to do this. This is the Jenna approved way. This is the Jenna approved way. <laughs> the enforcer way. said it, it is so. <laughs> this is the way. And then are we are we go, going to send out all of this to folks after? It's or? already been sent out. So oh, all of our all of our participants that. who are actual registrants. Uh, yep. And when I say actual registrants, it's not like a class of people that yeah, you're yeah. a real person. It's that you took the time. Yes, to go Professor register. Corey. <laughs> <laughs> I do look a little bit professor. <laughs> Um, as, as Ryan Kovar says, I've got enough gray in my beard to be relevant. Um, <laughs> yeah. So anyways, yes, it was sent out uh, via email to all registrants who selected the box that they wanted to participate in today's hackathon. Mm -hmm. It was mm -hmm. also sent out in the hackers dash text channel on our discord. So and I do okay. know there's been a handful of people who have uh, accessed it and are getting after Perfect. it. Perfect. So it's good yeah. stuff. Awesome. Yeah. I think it'll be exciting to see that, at, you know, over the weekend as we see more hosts yeah, you know, pop yeah. up and see what's going on. Yeah. One thing to call out too on this token, we are not like spying on anything. All we're pulling is Windows performance metrics, yeah, right? So we can see CPU data. We're not looking at anything. <laughs> yeah, and also right. one, thing to, right. one thing to say too, is we did have some folks who wanted to participate um, in the hackathon that yep. uh, didn't want didn't want to or didn't want you know didn't want to pay to set up iRacing or do any of that you are perfectly welcome as a hacker it, to send data from your rig it doesn't have to be running iRacing yep. but as we go forward when we start to get to some of the racing data we'll let we'll, we'll give you access to some of ours as the the host awesome. so you can tinker with that data so you don't have to feel like you're being left out of any of the the activities I would like to volunteer as somebody who can donate the data because then I have the best insights. Into there you go. <laughs> you know, it's one thing we ought to challenge. Whoever we should see, whoever does the best on the first like bonus challenge, gets to use uh, Tomic's drive. One of the professional drivers. Ooh. <laughs> Get the Love secret that. sauce there. That's figure right. out how to do the perfect turn. Oh. <laughs> yeah. It was so good. And they were all the same, just constantly. Oh. Yeah, it's it's just, it's not fair. He's he's just too good. McLaren Shadow, <laughs> you're doing well with him. That's right. <laughs> so, okay, we've got the token, Signal FX API token, copy paste, pretty good there. Now we also have our Signal FX realm there. So we're gonna copy that out and do US1 right there. And then we have 
an ingest URL and an API URL. Is that correct? That's right. So perfect. So we will match both of those up for the same realm. One of our fellow Splunkers just said, my data is your data. Me data, Sue data. Me data, <laughs> yeah. Sue data. Love it. Love so here it. we got the PowerShell command. Now what I did is I went ahead and opened up a PowerShell window. Did you have to I open it as an admin? Admin, yes. Okay. And if you aren't sure how to do that, you know, and you can come here, type in PowerShell, and then it should say run as administrator right there. You're good to go. You'll have a prompt. Hey, go ahead and do that. So copy, paste, we'll push go. And as you can see right now, it's actually downloading the MSI package. We are going for it. It's going to install it. Or it's doing a temporary uh, unpackage there, and then it will actually live in program files. So within there, what, what all's in there? We've got the smart agent. We've got the config.yaml file where we can actually then add in some custom integrations. Uh, so if you maybe find something that you would like to take a look at, you know, you can drop it in there. I hear GitHub has a wealth of resources. Um, it, any any specific ones that we would want to call out in that scenario? Um, yeah, you know, I, I think I think memory would be a really important one to be monitoring uh, during eye racing. Corey, is, we is got a good challenge. I think memory is interesting. I, you know, I think the thing that's going to matter a bunch is really going to be CPU performance and network uh, connectivity because. With iRacing, the game is there is some component of the game running locally, mm -hmm. but a, but it's all it's an online game. So without proper connectivity in the network, you're going to have a problem. And so I want to I think that the network's going to be one to watch, and one that's going to be on um, spoiler alert. We got a bonus uh, coming up. That's uh, I think GPU is going to be kind of a big deal because frame rate uh, and how it renders and the frames per second and the quality and how taxed our GPUs are mm -hmm. is going to be super interesting. And that's kind of a specific sort of gaming thing, maybe not as common in the enterprise. And so we're yeah. going to, we're going to talk about, that's going to be one of our bonuses to try that out. Yeah. That's going to be very cool. Yeah. It's I'm, I'm excited. I, one thing I specifically had an issue with was I, I had a 970 graphics card trying to run in VR and <laughs> It skipped like a flat stone on, on a <laughs> lake. It was, it was bad. And uh, I'd like to blame that for my driving skills uh, because I got it's, swapped there out. There you go. There you yeah. go. Yeah. <laughs> I got it swapped out and it seems to be functioning better. Yep. Which, but by the way, fair it's warning. It's the PC's fault for sure. That's right. Yeah. Exactly. Fair it's warning on iRacing. If you haven't ever done it before and you are prone to motion sickness beware but <laughs> sure as heck don't put on a vr headset and do it because it is real immersive and if you're prone to wrecking people like kyle is and you cause other people <laughs> to flip who are in vr it can make you legit sick <laughs> moi yeah. me <laughs> how dare Maybe we need a dashboard then of how many times who takes who out over here. Incident points are going to be counted, Kyle. I'm just yes. saying. We will do that. Okay. <laughs> we are installed. We're good. Uh, now, per the uh, instructions here, we've got where the agent.yaml is so we can take a look there. Now, I maybe. do want to run... Or go ahead, Jenna. Did I miss something? Oh, I was just thinking. Maybe we could uh, start uh, potentially predicting kyle's crashes <laughs> yep yep Man. wow um, we're, we're talking yeah. this is yeah the idea of generators <laughs> happening. it's a spicy crowd tonight it's a rough crowd <laughs> um, yeah the new guy yeah. is getting in trouble here you know yeah i see how it is <laughs> which by the way welcome kyle kyle joined the it strategist team this year he's been on board for what not even three months yet uh, it feels like three years. Well, that's what happens. Sure. Times. It feels like forever. But we're lucky to have you, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. It has been a wonderful time here so far, and I really appreciate wonderful teammates like you all. And then for the other teammates who are watching in as well, we'll include you there too. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> awesome. Cool. Well, we've got the status ready to go. And all that is is we're just calling the agent.exe there, typing status, and we'll see what we get out of that. Well, it looks like we're good. It's been up for about two and a half minutes. It seems like we're sending data. I got my KP-desktop 
uh, here. And then we can also do a couple different statuses here, but for time, we'll, we'll skip over that. If you do want to tinker in it and you have some questions, again, hit up Discord. We're around, happy to help. Now, let's jump back in and see if we've got some data here. How do we think we've done so far? Oh, we've got one extra host. Let's we go ahead and data. drop that the past minute. Oh, there it, it is. Who did we get? Yeah. KP Desktop Home. All He's right, in, KP all. Desktop Home. We are monitoring <laughs> KP's gaming nice. rig. I love it. This is so cool. And now we've got infrastructure windows. We can take a look at this. Uh, desktop Home, apply. Last minute. Yeah, see, Corey, I, this is what I was talking to you about with iRacing. So just for the, the audience at home, one thing I've noticed is that my, my memory seems to be struggling a bit. And I've only got, I think, 16 gigs, maybe. Yeah. And, yeah. and I need to do an uplift. And this will help uh, justify my purchase of toys to the CFO of the family as to why I need to do this now. You're not the only one. Actually, uh, one of our fellow Splunkers was just saying <laughs> that our commentary about the GPUs and some of this stuff, he's like, hey, thanks a lot. You literally just gave my kid a business case to approach me with on why he needs upgraded hardware to both game and stream simultaneously. Right. <laughs> it's all about the business case, folks. No, and, and uh, we, we joke about this, but if you it's do true. put your lens on with esports, and then you've got a team of esports athletes going at this, and now you're trying to figure out where do you spend your budget? Having a tool like this now yeah. takes the emotion out of where I think it, the issue is. And now we can just apply true logic to this and go here's where the data lies and this is where it tells you where you need to do you know like right now i don't necessarily need cpu but right ram is starting to tell a story for me right, right? and i yep. i think that's huge for us and and the fact that we could do it so quickly one single agent and then what you showed earlier jenna with integrating in on top of that mm -hmm. i i'm i, yep. I, I, I like think this. it's and awesome. then yeah and then we can get to to using that that intelligent alerting and not having these static thresholds and, and building something to see what's out of the norm. Um, yeah. And, and kind of tuning those alerts and, and reducing a lot of the noise as yeah. well. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, Kyle, let's look at your, your recipe card real quick. So we have officially deployed. We have uh, verified that we've got data flowing into SIM. We've got the dashboards. We've integrated. So let's go, because I want to be respectful of time. We're about an hour and a yes. minute in. Let's. Um, but I want to kind of talk about the fact that there's some, uh, to do the integrations, then we'll talk about building a detector, because I think you, you hit yeah. a point that I want to drive home, which is let's keep our end user in mind. So yep. if Tobin's running a team mm -hmm. and he needs to make decisions, as you said, on infrastructure that would help the team enable their service to run better, what are, maybe let's talk about memory utilization as an alert that can cause some action. Mm -hmm. Yeah, perfect. So one thing we at Big Data Beard use is Slack. It's a free tool that you can use to collaborate and communicate. And what we've seen is that across enterprises, it's, nice. it's widely used. So mm -hmm. what I think we could do is integrate then maybe an alert from one of our machines to send that to a Slack channel to go, hey, here's where an issue is. So somebody like Tobin could be alerted then hey, here's an issue, or hey, somebody's logged on and is, and is racing or launching a game or a platform to do that. So Jenna, if it's cool with you, I think what I'm gonna do is connect this to our Big Data Beard Slack instance. Yes, absolutely. Cool. And, and then, then are, we'll, we, are we gonna be able to see this in, in real time here? I hope so. Okay. So we'll see what we do. So Slack it works, here, it works, it works. Yeah. integration. <laughs> we'll sign into our workspace. We're doing it live. <laughs> <laughs> it's... Yep, we are doing it live. So is that our is that our workspace ID? I don't think it is. Oh, it's big. Yeah, it's big no, slash wait, or dash. Yeah. There we go. Because somebody registered <laughs> this knucklehead, the other one, and then we ended up forgetting that we had registered it. Oh my god! On a different email <laughs> that I didn't work for that company anymore, so I could never get it back. <laughs> so we are pro professionals here. So. Yes. Uh, <laughs> capital P professional. I went ahead and created just a, an alert channel that we can use for this. We've got the big data beard uh, team here. Mm -hmm. We're going to click some allows here. If you want, you can create your own Slack team at home, your own Slack workspace and build this out. Maybe if you wanted to have a family Slack or whatever like that. So we've got big data beard workspace. We've got a token. 
one thing I liked here too that that we've got is we can validate this to make sure that it's good to go. Okay. Well, and you would love validation as a <laughs> resident millennial, consistently in need of validating. <laughs> well, it's just as time goes on, so do the. You're jobs. doing great, sweetie. You're doing great. You're doing girl. great. Everything's going swimmingly. Yeah. Uh, got the peanut gallery back here. Thanks, guys. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we've we've got the integration. We've got the data in. Now we need the magic of the alert. Yep. Okay. Let's do so, it. So let's do this. Let's do it now, on memory. I think memory is a good one. Memory? Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, an, an alert here is called a detector, right, Jenna? Yep. Yep. Okay. So, so because the alert is the action. So we're setting up detectors and rules and then alert is the, the action. Okay. So mm -hmm. um, we'll call this Corey gets more memory or Corey memory detector. Oh, <laughs> we should really put in there. Corey justifies expense to Millie. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay, so we've got APM metrics alert rule and infrastructure are custom. Since we are monitoring physical memory, I'm going to select the infrastructure there. Yeah. Uh, select a metric. So uh, let's see memory utilization. And isn't that cool? You just start typing in memory. You don't need to know, you know, mm -hmm. what ex exactly what the metrics are that are available to you. You can just start typing it in all of the op it, it's going to be under memory something and all of the options are there how cool is that now we've got all the mm -hmm. hosts here uh, i think maybe we just select uh what would we want to say utilization uh 40 percent yeah i mean that probably, i don't know if we're gonna we're gonna flag it throw it at 20 on mine yeah do something so that we can just because mine's, mine's gonna mine's action. gonna flag it at 20 mm -hmm. i think Okay, so fire the alert, which is an and here while we're here, so taking a look at the conditions for this alert. So we're going to do it it's static this time, but if you go through, you can kind of see what all of the different conditions could be, including I love that historical anomaly one. Yeah, but. that's pretty slick. And if you're at home and you want to do some extra credit, maybe try mm -hmm. some of these and see if you can figure out maybe some patterns when you're gaming or, or something outside those yep. lines. And, and you can, you can mute these too. So, and, and clear them and all that. So if, if you're, if you set up too many, don't worry about it. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so we're going to set the threshold at 20%. This is going to be uh, noisy and that's okay. Cause that's what we want to do right now. Okay. So we can set this to critical. Let's maybe set it to a warning just so then, you know, we're not too upset. We could do a run book here. We can do a tip. Yeah, go, Corey, go to go to B and H photo and go buy more spend memory. money. Cool. So then as this alert fires, Shout now we've got Beards and Hats photo. Love you guys. <laughs> Y'all are awesome. So now we've got more uh information then. So now as this tr alert triggers, now we can see what's going on. Okay. So add recipients. So email team uh, slack, slack web, web hook yep slack slack Ooh. channel alert alert well, look at that big data beard alert tied in right there boom to go yep how are we feeling feeling good yeah, activate that bad boy let's see <laughs> activate. all right i uh i think my memory should go over i am <laughs> i'll be honest i'm a little fearful of kicking off anything additional on my machine to, uh, the, yeah. to put us into an alert condition because that may also put us into an offline condition. Let's see. Oh, look at oh, there. It's coming. There, there we go. You didn't even have to do anything. I talked about it and it, my memory, yeah. it's probably my memory is draining. So it's good. <laughs> Very cool. So now we've got the rule triggered, mm -hmm. the triggering condition. Uh, we did it for all hosts, and that is one thing that we we glossed over, but you can set it specific for your host. So as yep. you're building this out and you want to group into your own Slack channel, you can pick out your own host to then yep. be monitored so you're not catching all of our machines yep. that need more memory, unless you're just feeling particular. Good advice for Maddie. Yep. His kid's going to be setting up this alert immediately. <laughs> like and he's going to go can, to dad's email. Yeah. You yeah. can also create like uh, peer groups and do all of that mm -hmm. as well. So there's... Okay. Yeah, there's lots that we can do. All right. That's cool. So, oh, it looks like we may have lost Kyle. 
Did we lose Uh-oh. him? We got a cra- we got a Zoom crash. Stuff happens. Um, so what we've just done as a recap, just so everybody's on the same page, mm-hmm. we have uh, deployed the Windows Smart Agent on Kyle's machine. We already had it deployed on a handful of others. Yeah. In that Smart Agent, it's sending data to Splunk Infrastructure Monitoring. And out hey. of the box, we expose. Sorry, we lost you there for a minute, Kyle. Yeah, yeah. sorry about that, guys. I, I think it's um, my, my Zoom is popping up and saying my internet connection's unstable, but I'm hardwired oh. into a gigabit line. So, you know, um, it's maybe we'll monitor that for the next go around. It's, it's another problem. I'll tell yeah. you what, Kyle, actually, let's. Um, I think this is probably a good wrap point to just do a quick yeah. summary. Yeah. Um, so we've deployed it, we've got infrastructure information coming into Splunk Infermon now. We've done our hacking. We're good. Um, this is the beginning. So this matters to us because it's part of the story that we're going to build long term. But it is exactly where if you are new to Splunk as an enterprise adopter of a uh, monitoring tool for infrastructure, this is kind of mm-hmm. where you'd start to start deploying it across your uh, your data center uh, environment. And these are the kinds of abilities that you would have to start to create simple integrations to get data in integrate to the platforms for communication that makes sense to your business and your teams and to build using some of our machine learning capability to quiet some of the alerts as it makes sense right and what we want you to do now as homework is to think about the fact that remember our end customer is tobin lee the manager of the shadowy sports team and his team of drivers and what we want to do is deliver a powerful data-driven insight to them which will be inclusive infrastructure, but it's more than that. So the thing that we didn't show, we don't have time to show today is, is how would we go build the ability to alter the smart agent slightly with a config to pull data from the GPU. Now, I'll give you a clue. There is some native NVIDIA tools. Uh, NVIDIA SMI is a specific thing you can Google and search that does have some integrations with both CollectD and StatsD, which are both native things that we can simply integrate with. Uh, StatsD particularly actually uses Telegraph as a means. So check those out. And the bonus points are if you can get to not just NVIDIA GPU support, but broad GPU support. Because what I'll tell you is we have a handful of drivers in the series and potentially um, as our customer, the Shadow Team, may have some GPUs that are not NVIDIA. We know NVIDIA is clearly the popular, a very popular builder, but AMD is building some really sweet cards these days. And uh, specifically, we've got some folks running Mac uh, with eGPUs booted into Windows. So the ability to actually pull that data would be kind of interesting. So there, there's your homework. Keep learning, tinkering, get this deployed. Um, Kyle, go to the next slide for me. And then come back and join us on April 30th at 12 p.m. Pacific time on this Twitch channel. Make sure if you haven't registered on that QR code over there uh, or, or Googled Splunk data drivers, Go register so you can get access to this environment yourself. What we're going to be doing next time is pretty slick. We actually built, during the Big Data Beards virtual race to .conf, we built a custom Python script that would pull data from uh, iRacing and get it into Splunk. But really, the better solution that we found would actually be able to get it into Splunk Inframon because Splunk Infrastructure Monitor is actually a better metric store and is really the platform we're using going forward. So we're going to talk about yeah. how we migrate that existing Python script to use some custom Python scripting for data inputs into Splunk Inframon so that then in the weeks ahead or the months ahead of that, we can then begin to build those capabilities using Splunk's IT service intelligence to really power that service level view. So we're going to be monitoring the data coming out of iRacing for performance insights. We're going to be using SignalFX's and Splunk Inframon's Python library, and we'll show you some updated uh, integrations and alerting. With that, I want to say a big thank you, Jenna, for yes, joining us as course. our subject matter expert. Uh, thank you to the McLaren Shadow Esports team, specifically Tobin. You were awesome to chat with. Can't wait to talk with you on the next session. If y'all haven't followed him on t- Twitter yet, Tobin Lee fifty five, definitely follow the Shadow McLaren e- uh, Esports team. Thank you, Kyle, for being our hands on the keyboard uh, jockey for this session. You did great. You, you oh, did. Thanks. You validated. <laughs> yeah. You really did a yeah. nice job. I'm finally validated. Yeah, that's a quick right. validation check for you. You did great. You did great. But did more than anything that. else, thank you all, participants, for joining Data Drivers. We are excited to have you come along with us as we have some fun racing, but hopefully we all learn together some incredible capabilities around using Splunk's IT portfolio 
to power really next generation insights. So thanks again for joining Data Drivers and we'll see you on the racetrack. Awesome.